Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcady Economics. Wow, I sure do miss each and every one of you. Wish I could be there on video today. Uh, it is Tuesday, February. Let's see what we got. Date here is the 16th. And unfortunately, there's a big power outage where I am in Austin, Texas today. So I'm actually charging my phone in the car. I've had some sh- thoughts I wanted to share all day because there are wild things happening. I'm sure you noticed. Obviously, first in the silver market, quite a volatile chart today. And I guess the thing it reminds me most of is the gold chart from March 23rd of last year in 2020. Certainly worth taking a look at if you can pull that up. That's the day the EFP market broke. Saw HSBC announce $200 million loss on that. CIBC, $60 million. I'm sure there was a handful of others. And the chart looks pretty much like that. Obviously, things happen quickly over the weekend. Maybe not in Wall Street's eyes, but as we pointed out, there was the rather bizarre interview with Jeff Curry from Goldman Sachs. And something that at least I was researching all Monday and wish I could continue on as soon as I get a computer that is charged and has internet access, which has not happened yet today. But what was shocking to me is that I didn't realize, because again, a lot of this has happened quickly, but now we see that the SLV prospectus was changed on February 3rd, the day after the market got clobbered 10% on February 2nd in the face of panic buying and massive SLV and Silver Trust additions. February 3rd, they changed the prospectus language in the middle of the night. I haven't seen any notification uh, from, from SLV about that. It's interesting because I also realized that phone call I made to iShares, that was on the 5th, and they didn't say anything about it then, which I think is another legal breach. I'm going to be careful about certain things because a legal process has begun, and I'm not sure how much of that I can share just yet, but I'll just leave that there yet. The fact that I I had an occur it's like thinking about about a lot of these dates now and as information comes out I'm able to piece things together. They didn't say anything about that on February 5th when I called which refutes directly some of the prospectus changes made February 3rd. They didn't say anything about changes made February 3rd. And then it's interesting because in those changes If you actually read through that great article by Ronan Manley of Bullion Star, who was the one that, at least I, or I don't know if he found it or someone notified him, but he reported it, and you have, in the actual legal wording change, they described how basically they were disavowing any liability if there's a short squeeze. They didn't tell anyone, and then when Jeff Curry of Goldman Sachs went on CNBC the day after... On February 4th, he was directly asked about a short squeeze. And the answer he gave seems in direct contradiction with the changes that were made the night before that he almost had to have been aware of. Goldman Sachs is one of the authorized participants. Jeff's a representative of Goldman Sachs when he goes on CNBC. So it feels to me like something has already broken you may have heard me mention before my background was as an equity options trader and my first job was Moody's the first two months I saw them in the Enron scandal then later on when I would trade equity options lived through the subprime collapse the quantitative easing silver's run up to 50 and at least In terms of how it feels, which let's just call it subjective, don't take this by any means as trading advice or anything like that, but what's happening now just feels even beyond Lehman in some sense. And perhaps one thing I'll pull up real quick here to mention, you can take a look for yourself, but the bond market, I had noticed over the weekend the bond market, you know, had been selling off gradually, then took a big dip on Friday with a surging yield. Again, if uh, anyone knew, if you see yields rising, that means the price of the bond is falling. And there on CNBC today, S&P closes slightly lower as investors grow concerned about surging bond yields. 
And let's see, what is the number? To, uh, number did we get to? Yeah, 10 year Treasury yield jumped nine basis points Tuesday to top 1.30%, level not seen since February 2020. Uh, and again, I really haven't had access to even reliable internet on my phone, so I don't have too many more details. Obviously, you can go online. Hopefully, if you have a better internet connection, read about that. Again, what exactly to make of it? I'm not sure that you can say just yet that the bond vigilantes have finally returned and are taking over or leaving the market, but it sure feels like somebody knows something has broken and money is moving quickly obviously the cryptos have been rallying bitcoin i believe top fifty thousand. although perhaps even more significantly well, maybe not more significantly but noteworthy even the altcoins have started moving recently so a lot of money big money moves happening right now and Maybe the way that I've been thinking of it today is if you imagine you're standing, you know, you have a big brick wall behind you. You can't see over it or past it. So you can't see what's happening behind you. But to the side, you see people running, screaming, crying. You know, some of them are on fire and they're, you know, just panicking out of there. You can tell that something's happening. And I guess that's where I'm at today where the sequence of events as it falls into context that you had the panic buying, you had the surge in price, you had the JP Morgan report, you had the crushing of the price, you had all of the other things that went along with that. And then you have the, the prospectus changes in the middle of the night. Then you have Goldman going on the air the next day. I don't, I'm not sure if there's a way to say that he did not lie there. I don't, I don't, I want to be careful how I use that. I can't see a way to see that, but now you see a lot of markets moving quickly and again, that's the nature of some of these things where you know, you don't know when the price is finally moved until after it moves. But at least from my financial career, this is by far the most stress that I've ever seen in the system. In some ways, it passes what I recall from the Lehman Brother day, even sitting on the New York Stock Exchange that day. I mean, we're back on the Amex at that point. But um, again, I don't want to say this to scare anyone because I don't I think the best part is you know, you've heard me talking about this. You've heard other people talking about this for years, some of you for decades. So you're prepared. And I think we're getting close to some good news for silver investors, for people who have called you a conspiracy theorist or said they don't want to hear about gold and silver and they've piled into treasuries and other stuff. I don't know what is going to shake out for the people who follow that path. Um, I mean, and I guess I would say if there was anybody who was sitting there saying, well, I want to buy silver, but, you know, I want to wait till it's closer to going. I'm trying to phrase this appropriately. This would be my final warning call. And I say that and to put a little context where maybe if you look at it on a scale of how likely is something, maybe it's was 20% before and then it's up to 40%. All of the alarm bells are going off from what I am seeing. I'm trying to stick to just the tangible data as much as possible because my intuition is screaming even louder than what I can explain in tangible, uh, and tangible and support tangibly with evidence. So Again, maybe that's why I chose not to be an individual financial planner because it's easier for me to trade my own money and know the risks that I'm taking. And I think that's part of it as a trader or, you know, an investor. And certainly if you just have physical silver and you're sitting there and you leave it, then it doesn't really matter whether it's tomorrow or a year from now. But just to the degree that we have a show focusing on the markets and these are the things I think about and Again, not in any means legal financial advice, but it just feels 
to me like something has broken and I think we're pretty close to seeing that reflected and getting out. Uh, I see there was a lot of volume in PSLV today. Uh, I wish I had my computer so I could dig more into what's happening with SLV. I'm sure there's a lot of volume there and I mean quite a wild chart. So, but that's the thing in trading. You don't, you know, when the day silver hits 50, whether that's soon or takes a couple of years, which seems hard to imagine, at least from what I'm seeing today, you know, once it's already there, you know, it's already there. So there's some degree like trading is a science of probabilities and maybe maybe it's 80% of the way there, which doesn't mean that there's not some way the banks can change the rules, calm things down. We kind of saw that two weeks ago with the first Majestic short squeeze and the silver short squeeze. Price came back down for a little bit, but it reminds me of the same way subprime unfolded. There were a couple warning flares, but you see how Wall Street just assumes it's done when Twitter hashtags are down, but they don't look at the underlying fundamentals. They didn't look when they saw those subprime warnings. They didn't look at the asset quality. When it just died down for a day, they stopped thinking about it. So I would suggest don't take anything I say, uh, you know, and, and may use that as your decision making. But look at the signs, look at these things and piece them together for yourself. Uh, and again, I, I know maybe I, I mean, I'm somewhat stunned by what I'm seeing today. I don't think there's any need to be alarmed. You're prepared for this. You're ready for this. Every time you've listened to me or other channels that get into this stuff or you've talked with your friends or your husband or wife and you've thought through these things. Uh, so, I mean, it's exciting. Again, there's the degree to which it's affecting other people and some aren't probably going to be getting the best end of this and you care about them as well. But anyway, I, I don't know how to phrase it. I'm just trying to tell you as honestly as possible what I am seeing and feeling and not that my opinion is necessarily the way that it's going to be, but just all I can do is come on here and be as honest as possible. And I feel it would be inappropriate not to at least share that that is my current perspective on things today so with that said thanks for tuning in sorry there's no video today but going to figure something out we'll get that internet on back soon enough who knows maybe uh, another video or two later tonight there's a lot of things happening look forward to being with you again soon and hope you're doing well out there